Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back to VR Essentials, where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality and your go-to place for any content related to the HP Revo G2. My name is Lazius K, and today's video is very exciting as it's all about reprojection in Assetto Corsa Competizione, because of course, we want the most immersive experience using our HP Reverb G2. So I'm going to be doing some benchmarking in today's video to show you what the differences are between not using it and using it. And also when you bump down SteamVR to 50% for the SS and also to 100% super sampling. So let's go. Voice recognition authorized. Reprojection? Reprojection in reprojection. So what is it? Well, basically, this is where Steam VR and Windows Mixed Reality came together to help each other to try and provide the highest fidelity as possible for us HP Reverb G2 users. Steam VR will render each frame instead of 90 frames per second. They'll only render half a frame. So that means 45 frames per second. And then here comes in Windows Mixed Reality will then render every other half frame and extract them and basically render their own 45 frames per second. So in total, it will appear as if it's, you know, 90 frames per second. Now reprojection with the Windows Mixed Reality works well, apparently with any graphics card that is 1060 from Nvidia and above, and also AMD 470 and above. Now, of course, do plenty more research about this if you need to. Today, we're going to focus on benchmarking, you know, what kind of results you're going to get at different Fidelities in Steam VR. So we're going to, you know, put Steam VR to 50% in the super sampling and also 100%. And then you'll be able to see what you can really get out of the graphics card here if perhaps you did not have an RTX 2070. Incoming message. Just in case you're not aware, we did upload a couple of videos very recently about Assetto Corsa Competizione, about the graphic different settings. So the first video spoke about how to optimize the graphic as much as possible with no reprojection using SteamVR at 100%. And then also the second video talks about benchmarking the differences between using Assetto Corsa Competizione at 90 Hertz refresh rate and also 60 Hertz refresh rate, as you can get some pretty decent graphics there and also smooth gameplay. To enable reprojection inside of Windows Mixed Reality is actually really easy. You don't really need to know any coding or anything like that. So let me just show you those steps very quickly and then I'll show you the benchmarks. So the first thing you need to do is go to your Steam and your library, then search for Steam VR, and then just right click on Steam VR and then go to properties. Now, when you click on properties, there'll be a window that pops up and then just go to betas or betas. And then where it says none there, just click on there and then you'll see a drop down that will basically come up. And then just choose beta Steam VR beta update. And then once you've basically chosen that, you just need to close the window and then we'll move forward to the next step. So staying inside of uh, Steam, all you have to do then is search for Windows Mixed Reality and then just right click on it as well. Go to properties and then go to where it says betas and then just you know, uh, up here it will say non maybe, just make sure that you choose beta public beta as well, and then just close it. There might be another step you need to do, which is recommended by some people who, you know, have been using reprojection. So go back to the properties of Windows Mixed Reality instead of your library in Steam. Then this time go to where it says local files. And then up on the first one where it says browse, just click on browse. And then you'll see where it says resources, click on that and then click on settings. Now just, uh, you know, download notepad or, you know, notepad should do just fine. Then you just double click on this. It will open up basically the text version of whatever code is written inside. And then all you have to uh, look out for is this line here, which says comment out or remove this line. So all you have to do is normally what it will say is it will say none or it will say disabled. So just change this to enabled and then also remove these two bars here. Now it is recommended that perhaps what you could do is, you know, just save a copy of this file and change the name from, um, you know, default dot settings to maybe default dot settings dot or underscore, you know, original, and then just place it somewhere just in case you, you know, you want to have the original file as, you know, as backup. And then the other thing is you'll see down here as well, uh, this, I will explain to you, basically it means that it will show you 
um, you know, what's happening during the reprojection inside of your headset, it will actually give you a color um, and this color has a meaning, like a, like basically a little square that will come up on your VR headset during the gameplay and it will show a different kind of color. So this different color has different meaning and I'll show this to you in just a little second. So normally it says false. So, you know, it would say false normally. So just change it to true. And then same thing here, just bring this all the way to here so that, you know, basically it will, it, it, it will actually work inside. And then you just click on save. Activation code. So the little square I was just trying to talk about basically is called the motion reprojection indicator. So there are going to be four different colors. One is going to be green. The other one is going to be kind of light blue gray. The other one's going to be blue. And then the other one is going to be red. So anything that will show up in green will basically mean that the motion reprojection is off because the application is rendering at full frame rate already. Cyan, which is the light blue kind of grayish up there, is basically going to be the motion reprojection is on because the application is CPU bound and not GPU bound. Okay, so it's not coming from your actual GPU or your graphics card. And then for the blue color, it will say that motion reprojection is on because the application is GPU bound. So it's coming from your graphics card and not your native computer. And then for red, it means motion reprojection is off because the application is rest is running, sorry, at less than half frame rate or, you know, and basically it means that you need to try to reduce the super sampling if unable. So if basically reprojection is unable and it shows red in your headset, you're going to have to tune down um, basically Steam VR's super sampling from, let's say, 100 originally to perhaps 50. And I'll show you this in the benchmark in just a minute. And then also the green plus cyan plus blue at the same time basically means that the motion reprojection is in half frame rate mode. So it's running at 45 frames per second or the application requested motion reprojection. So it actually needs it in order to boost its frame rate to provide you as smooth gameplay as possible. Okay, so we're done with all the most boring stuff. Now let's get into the exciting part, which is basically I'm going to show you some benchmarking between using super sampling at 50% on SteamVR and also 100%. Voice recognition authorized. Alright, so let's go inside of Steam VR. Now you're gonna see a little icon that looks like the Windows Mixed Reality logo at the bottom. If you don't see it, just click on the little, you know, three lines kind of icon there, and you'll see it'll say Windows Mixed Reality for Steam VR settings. So just click on that and then go to first the tab that's called graphics. Now inside the graphics is basically where you can enable um, you know the reprojection that will take place for your games. Now Generally speaking, the setting that is recommended to use would be automatic. So that's what we're going to be choosing for today. The other thing that you'll want to do before we close this box is go to the developers tab and where you see enable motion reprojection status indicator, enable this. Once you've enabled it, you'll see a little green square normally will come up on the top left hand side of your headset. If you don't see it, then just close everything and then restart Steam, um, you know, and Steam VR and then you'll see it straight away. Authorizing. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go inside of my Gigabyte Aerus engine software where I can basically control the overclocking of my actual graphics card because traditionally I had an actual custom overclocking and it was too hot for my GPU. It would go above 83 degrees, which is too high for it, you know. So I'm just going to put it on basically the OC mode, which is overclocking mode and, you know, just run with that. And then let's see what's going to happen when I'm running with it using the multiplayer mode instead of Assetto Corsa Competizione. Now, of course, there are plenty of softwares like this around. So do check your graphics card as to where you can get it. If, of course, you can't use this specific one for your own type of graphics card. I'm sure with AMD, they have their own and also other kind of NVIDIA will have their own as well. Landing sequence initiated. Okay, so I've restarted my computer for the Aorus engine to take effect inside of the graphics card. And then we're back inside of Assetto Corsa Competizione. Now I put the super sampling in SteamVR back to 100%. And what is really good about here is first of all, the performance for me is absolutely fine. It's very smooth. I don't have any issues whatsoever. So if you're using an RTX 2070, please put some comments below. Do try them out and let me know whether it works for you. And if it didn't, if you have better settings, and of course, share this with us so that we can all learn and the 6,600 other members on our VR Essentials YouTube channel can also take that feedback and learn from you as well. So 
First things at the top, of course, it says 45 frames per second because the reprojection is taking place, but it feels much more smoother than that. It feels more or less 60 to 70 frames per second, I would say. So definitely no kind of motion sickness here. Everything's running pretty well. Then also in terms of the GPU temp and usage, it doesn't really go above 80 or 81. And very rarely does it go to 83. So already here we managed to reduce the heat, which I think is really good, even though of course it is inside of the orange and we're not in the green, so it's not perfect. But at least, you know, it's better than it was before. In terms of reprojection ratio here, we're running at about almost 20% also. So not too bad. And it really does, as I mentioned, provide some pretty decent gameplay here. All right, so what we're gonna do now is boost down or bump down the uh, super sampling in SteamVR from 100% to 50%. And let's see what we can get out of that. And by the way, the settings inside of the render scale is actually set at 80%. So that's much higher than without reprojection. And also the pixel density set at 160% with shadows put to high and everything is running pretty well. All systems active. By the way, if you want to boost those frame rates inside of simulations, for example, you know, Microsoft Flight Simulator or Assetto Cortez Competizione, then I find that generally speaking, all you have to do is a couple of things. First of all, go to your mixed reality settings and then go to the headset display tab. Now we see experience options. Now, normally I used to have it, as I mentioned, on best visual quality before, but I found that when I changed it to optimize for performance, what happens is that mixed reality is not going to show the mirrored display on your PC. So that window will be gone. So that again is going to give your app more frames per second to be able to just focus on it as well. So the other thing is you don't actually need Steam to be running. You just need Steam VR. So if you have Steam running, you can close it. You don't need it unless, of course, you're running the FPS tool and you want to know what kind of frame rates are happening. Then you might need Steam VR to be running. Sorry, Steam to be running as well as Steam VR. Otherwise, you can just close Steam and just be running natively Steam VR from your Windows, um, you know, mixed reality in your HP Reverb G2. And then the next setting that I change normally is I go inside of graphic settings, which is on the right hand side there. And then I will switch off the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling because I don't want anything to be updating or whatever might be happening in the background whilst I'm actually playing the game, because that will also, you know, unfortunately hinder the actual experience inside of the VR gameplay. And then finally, the other thing that you can do is you can go to your graphic performance preferences. And then normally I will put, you know, if it comes from the Microsoft Store, then you just click this one. Otherwise, if it comes from Steam, you click on desktop app, then browse and then go and find the, you know, wherever your, you know, your, your, your app is actually installed. So it's here. So just click add. Then instead of add, what I will do is I'll click on options and then I'll put on high performance and then save. So this will also help to boost those frame rates a little bit inside of the VR gameplay. Voice, Voice recognition, recognition authorized. Now, a couple of videos ago, I showed you one by one every single setting that I use inside of NVIDIA. Now, let me just show you very quickly before I show you all the various different settings inside of Assetto Corte Competizione, some of the changes I made inside of NVIDIA. So the first thing is I actually changed power management to maximum performance so that I really get the best out of the power to get the best frame rate as possible instead of trying to eat up too much power that will actually cost me in terms of producing heat in my GPU, for example. Now, the other thing that I did is I switched off virtual reality variable super sampling because at the end of the day, I really didn't feel that this made any difference whatsoever inside of ACC. Maybe it does, but if it does, honestly, I think it's going to be super, super minimal. So I turned it off because I simply don't want my computer to do extra work, you know, for nothing. And then for texture filtering quality, normally I put it on high quality, but honestly, again, I didn't really see more, you know, after doing more testing since the previous videos. Um, so I decided to put it on high performance instead so that I can really get as much performance as possible inside of the gameplay when using Assetto Corda Competizione. Now, let me show you the actual settings I've used one by one in Assetto Corda Competizione so that you could potentially replicate these at home. And then you can comment below, let me know whether it worked for you. This, this is, is not, not a drill. drill.
So we put the Steam VR video settings for Aceto Corsa Competizione to 50% now in terms of super sampling. And the first thing you'll notice is that again the frames per second says more or less 45 because it's reprojecting to a higher frame per second. The gameplay is very, very smooth. We're still at the render scale 80 and also for the pixel density, we're still at 160 as well. So no changes there and the graphics are more than decent, I have to admit. The gameplay is very smooth. It just is not giving me any, you know, latency or anything at all, jagged things or whatever. You know, in terms of motion sickness, I'm actually completely fine and very comfortable running at these settings at the moment. And also what you'll notice is the GPU temp and usage have been reduced. So that's actually giving me even less heat inside of my GPU, which is very, very good. And all the other cars, even though we're running on the track here with about 10 or 11 cars, nothing's happening. They're all running very well. And also we put the shadows to mid this time, not high, but it seems to be doing really well. And in fact, the reprojection at this 50% uh, on the super sampling for SteamVR is not actually activating that much because natively I'm already getting quite a lot of feedback from the actual game itself. So all good there. And if you want to reduce the GPU's heat as much as you can and still get something fairly decent, then what you can do is actually reduce the render scale from 80 to maybe 65 or 60, and then also reduce the pixel density from 170 to maybe 155 or 150. And then what's gonna happen, as you can tell from the readings here, we're much, much higher than the average frames per second. It's natively at around 75, 76. So, you know, and the reprojection ratio is also still boosting. So it's much smoother. The graphics, of course, are somewhat a little bit, you know, compensation here, but it's more than good enough to have some decent gameplay. So do try these settings and let me know in the comments below, you know, whether it worked for you or if you have your own settings that are better, then do share these with the rest of the VR Essentials community as well. As you can tell, the GPU temp usage here is in the green and then, you know, it's more or less in the 70s. So much better kind of GPU temperature readings there. Activating light speed. So first things first, at the very top, of course, full screen is enabled, then my resolution will be the resolution that I need to use. Then VSync is always disabled. Now for frame rate limit, normally I used to use it. Um, I used to have it off, in fact, uh, but I find that it's better to limit the frame rate to the actual headset because otherwise it might use additional frames that it doesn't need to, putting more you know, stress on the actual machine. So I put to 90 and this is basically the only difference made between today's video and the previous videos for that section. And then for the below section, uh, resolution scale. Now 80 can manage it both at super sampling for SteamVR at 100% and also SteamVR at 50%. Uh, However, for 100%, generally speaking, I bring it down to 65. So that would be for when I put it, you know, at 100% on SteamVR. I get much more fluid this gameplay there. Um, However, when I'm using SteamVR at, um, you know, 100%, 70, no problem, it can do it. Now for the shadows, same thing, I was able with reprojection to use mid shadows, uh, sorry, view distance, I put to mid instead of high because I didn't find there was that much of a big difference between high and mid. So I compensated a little bit here and I put it to mid. Now for shadows, uh, with reprojection, I'm able to use mid, no issue, and even go to high with Steam VR bumped down to 50% uh, for Assetto Corsa Competizione video settings. So, however, when I'm using the 100% super sampling in Steam VR, um, then I generally leave it to low, even though mid is perfectly okay. It can still it can still do it, but I just prefer low. It's my personal preference. I get smoother gameplay that way. Uh, contact shadows and shadow distances. Normally, I leave this on low and disabled. Anti-aliasing, I put on high. No need to put on epic. I'm compensating a little bit here, but I found that putting it on high actually works better than putting it putting it on epic. Sorry. Um, Anti-aliasing, I always leave and temporal because again, you can go and watch the previous video we did. We did some benchmarking here between temporal and also KTAA and FXAA. So you'll know the differences. It just produces more smoother gameplay. For effects, post-processing, foliage texture. Now, when I put Steam VR to 50% super sampling, I'm able to put post-processing to high. But when I put it on 100% uh, on Steam VR super sampling, I'm able to put it on mid. However, I still find that low gives the best 
um, you know, frame rates in terms of gameplay, you will feel that it's much smoother. And then for effects, foliage and texture, it doesn't make that big a difference because generally speaking, we don't really look at what's outside when we're driving that much, we focus on the road or on the cars. So I just leave it to low. Mirror view distance, I put it at 70 as usual, mirror quality. Now mirror quality, I put it off. I found that it actually helps. And if you're not really, you know, that bothered by knowing who's behind you, then, you know, just turn it off and use the frame rates to your advantage is, you know, my suggestion. Otherwise, just put it on low, it's fine. Uh, mirror frame rate limit, normally I put this to 90 as well. Uh, mirror resolution, I will leave this to low or mid if you want to. And then for the number of cars, I limit it to normally 10 or 12. Now for virtual reality uh, section, for the VR pixel density, as I mentioned before, I was able to use both at 100% on Steam VR super sampling and also 50% super sampling. Um, 170. However, um, for 50%, I would generally bump it to maybe 160. And then for 100%, uh, I'll put it down to 135 or 140. Generally, that's where I get the best performance. But and also my GPU's heat will, you know, go down. But, you know, as I mentioned, I was able to bump it up. So and I didn't have that many that much issue. And then finally, for the final section, uh, materials quality, I leave that to high temporal app sampling enabled. Bloom quality is all the glaring and stuff. I put it to off. Volumetric, I disable it. Uh, foliage quality, I put it on very low. Car LOD, I put it on 60. And then for the H LOD, basically, um, you know, this will impact some of the, um, you know, it will determine when to actually get rid of some of the frames and stuff. So I leave it normally enabled. It's an extra protection to have. And then for advanced sharpening filter, normally I put it enabled. But generally speaking, when I put it on disabled, it doesn't really affect the frame rates anyway, to be you know very honest with you. And then finally, for the image customization, this doesn't really change anything at all inside the gameplay, except for the camera dirt effect. This will definitely impact the frame rate. So I generally always leave this to 1.0. And then for the sharpness, I normally leave it between one, you know, one, 100 and 150, normally speaking. Uh, those are generally my preferred settings. And then for tone mapping, you can go and view the previous videos that I did, the first one, where I did some benchmarking, some gameplay there, to show you the differences between ASUS and um, the default setting. So guys, make sure, as I mentioned before, that you're part of the notification squad. So YouTube tells you in your video feed when I upload the next video, which is very exciting. It's all about using a special script to boost those frame rates. And then we're also going to be uploading another video dedicated to the FPS tool, which you can purchase on Steam VR, letting you know, you know, giving you my feedback as to what it's been like to be using it whilst benchmarking, you know, for example, ACC. So guys, leave a comment below the like button so you can share your feedback with the rest of the VR Essentials YouTube community. And by the way, are there any, you know, really easy dummy for beginner videos as to how to learn how to tune the cars? Because personally, I find it really tough, really difficult. I don't really understand all the symbols and numbers and all that kind of stuff. So if you know any of those, you know, how to tune ATC cars for dummy videos, then that'd be really fantastic. I'd love to take a look. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video.